وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد وإن تسير في سورة الأعلى الله سبحانه وتعالى يسأل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى سورة الأعلى The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم He used to read it The Prophet used to read سورة الأعلى in Salatul Eid. Salatul Eid, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would read this surah. He would also read it, the Shaf'a, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would pray qabla al-witr. Witr is how many? The last three. The Prophet, before he prayed the last one, in the first two, he would read in it, the witr alayhi salatu salam and in salatul jum'ah salatul jum'ah the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he would read suratul a'la alayhi salatu salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said sabbih isma rabbika al-a'la exalt the name of your lord the most high allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says sabbih isma rabbika Exalt the name of your Lord the Most High. The scholars of Tafsir, they differed and they disputed amongst themselves. Is it the name of Allah that should be exalted? Or is it Allah that should be exalted? Is it the name of Allah that's exalted? Or is it Allah the one who's been exalted? So they disputed amongst themselves regarding this particular verse. They disputed so some of the scholars, they said that Sabbi Hisma Rabbik Ism is mentioned here, which is exalt the name of your Lord. They said that the, the word Ism, name, here is a Za'ida. Za'ida meaning it's an additional. What it actually means, in actuality, what it means is that exalt your Lord. That's what it actually means. And we know, brothers, using the term Za'ida, for the Quran and saying this is additional, it's a ziyada, it's a za'ida, it's not good manners when it comes to the Quran. It might be good manners in grammar, but when it comes to the Quran, these are not the terms that you should use. But the Arabs, they have five terms that they use. Only two of them should be used for the Quran and the other 
The other three should never be said about the Quran. The Arabs, they say, for example, Zaida. That should not, should not be used for the Quran. They say, Laghi. That should also not be used for the Quran. Muqham. It's also what they use. That also, also should not be used for the Quran. The only two that should be used for the Quran, the only two that should be used for the Quran is Tawqeed and Silah. Tawqeed, which means emphasis, and Silah, which, sila, which means a connective. Sila, which means connective. Those two can be used for the Quran. So they're saying that here what it means is Sabbihisma Rabbika al-A'la is like what you say in the Ruku'. What do you say in the Ruku'? Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. So it's Allah that's supreme. Allah is the one who's high. So the ism here they're trying to say is a tawqid or sila. Tawqid or sila. And that view, they've used, they have an evidence for it. To say that here, it's actually exalt Allah. They say that there's a hadith narrated by Ibn Hibban and Al-Hakim narrated, narrated in his mustadrak that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اِجْعَلُوهَا fi sujudikum." Place this surah, when the surah came down, surah al-a'la, when it came down, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, subhana, sabbih isma rabbika al-a'la. The Prophet said, اِجْعَلُوهَا اِجْعَلُوهَا make it. اِجْعَلُوهَا make it. Meaning, make this surah fi sujudikum, in your sujood. Did I say Subhana Rabbi al-A'la is said in the Ruku'ah? Before did I say the Ruku'ah? Sabku uh, lisan. I meant sujood. Uh, what's said in the sujood? Ruku'ah? Subha? Subhana Rabbi al-Azim is said in this Ruku'ah. Uh, sujood I meant. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said when the surah came down, اِجْعَلُوهَا make it fi sujoodikum in your sujood. And what is it that you say in the sujood? Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. So they said, if the Prophet said, make it in your sujood, the one that's exalted is Allah, not the name. But that hadith, some of the scholars weakened it. They weakened that. They weakened that hadith and they said it's not authentic. Lakin the asal, ya ikhwat al-kiram, my brothers and sisters, is that when an ayah comes to say that this is an emphasis, if a group of people are saying it's an emphasis, and another group of scholars are saying, no, it's not an emphasis, it's giving us additional information the ones who take priority are the ones who are saying that is giving us additional information. Because the qa'idah is al-asru fil kalam ta'sis that the default position in speech is that it gives you new information, not emphasis. So the ones who are saying sabbi hisma rabbika al-a'la ismak ism here is actually a ta'sis, is giving us that information, is correct. It's correct. So what does it mean to exalt your Lord in the name of your Lord? What, how does one exalt the Lord in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah explained it in another ayah in the Quran. He said, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَىٰ Allah has noble names. فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا Call on to Allah with those names. And then Allah says, وَذَرُوا الَّذِينَ يُلْحِدُونَ فِي أَسْمَائِهِ And one should stay away from those who are distorting the name of Allah. So the way that you can exalt Allah's name is to stay away from ilhad. وَذَرُوا الَّذِينَ يُلْحِدُونَ To stay away from ilhad. What does it mean to stay away from ilhad? Okay, what does it mean for a person to stay away from ilhad regarding Allah's names? It's four things. Four points. And this by doing these four things, you're exalting Allah's name. Number one is do not reject Allah's name. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inkar usmihi, rejecting Allah's name is doing ilhad of Allah's name. Allah named himself this name. He gave himself this name. For you to come and to reject that name. For you to come and then to reject that name. For you to come and then reject that name is what? Ilhad. That's number one. Number two is making for Allah a name which he didn't give himself. You make a name for him. And you say this is his name. The second way that a person does ilhad of Allah's name and is not doing exalting, is not doing the ayah sabbihisma rabbika al-a'la is by giving Allah a name that he didn't give himself. Allah has names. 
That which we know from the names are 99. But Allah has more than that. Allah has more than those names. If you give him a name that he never gave himself, or you give him a characteristics that he never gave himself, then this is ilhad. Number three is saying that a name of Allah or a characteristics of Allah, because every name of Allah has a characteristics in it, saying that a name of Allah has deficiency in it and it shows deficiency is also ilhad. And you're going against the ayah, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا وَذَلُوا الَّذِينَ يُرْحِدُونَ فِي أَسْمَاءِ The fourth thing is making the name of Allah similar to the name of a creation. Like the uh, Quraysh did. What did they do? They took Allah's name. Like Allah. It came from the word Allah. They took it. Uzza, Aziz. They took it. So Tashmihu al bil makhluq. Making the creator similar to the creator in terms of names. This is Ilhad as well. This is also, it's also Ilhad. It's also Ilhad. Then the one who wants to exalt Allah's names should stay away from those four. So that's how we say, Sabbihisma Rabbika. It's correct to leave it the way it is. Sabbihisma. Exalt the name of your Lord Allah the Most High. Rabbika al A'la. The High Lord of your Allah. Ta'ala. Walidalika the Prophet was said, that whenever he would read this ayah in the prayers and when he would pray in the salah, he would say, alayhi salatu wasalam, when he says, Sabbihisma rabbika al-a'la, the messenger used to say, Subhana rabbi al-a'la, he would say. He would say, Subhana rabbi al-a'la, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says, Alladhi the one, khalaqa, who created, fasawa, and he proportioned you. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He created you and He proportioned you. Exalt that one. Here Allah is saying, Alladhi the one, which one? The one who, the one that you exalt. Exalt Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why should you exalt Him? Because He what? Khalaqa. He created you subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He also did for what for you? Fasawa. And He proportioned you subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the creations that we see today around us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. And everything that he created, he subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he do? He made for it what is befitting for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made every body a neck that can carry the head. He made hands that can, his muscles and his tissues can lift up. He created him like that. He subhanahu wa ta'ala and he proportioned you. وَالَّذِي the one Exalt him as well. Exalt the one who is what? قَدَّرَ فَهَدَى The one who destined and then he guided subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he do? He destined and he also, he also, he guided subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari rahimahullah, he mentions in this verse that the verse is very general, especially when it came to the guidance. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala here, he says, وَالَّذِي the one Exalt him. Qaddara, he destined. Exalt the one who destined everything. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destined? So because the ayah is unrestricted, we leave the destination also unrestricted. He destined everything for this human being. But from the things Allah destined for the human being is that he is going to come into the world at this particular time. And that he's going to leave at this particular time. And that he's also going to accumulate this much deeds. All of that he destined it subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was written. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, sorry, that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud narrated. Inna ahadakum yujma'u khalqu fi batni ummi arba'ina yawman nutfa. Thumma yakunu alaqata mithla dalik. Thumma yakunu mudghata mithla dalik. Thumma, yaw, thumma yurusalu ilayhi malak. فَيُنْفَخُ فِيهِ الرُّوحِ وَيُؤْمَرُ بِأَرْبَعِ كَلِمَاتِ بِكَتْبِ رِزْقِهِ وَأَجَلِهِ وَعَمَلِهِ شَقِيٌّ أَوْ سَعِيدٌ That your food, what you're going to eat, the clothing that you're going to wear, everything, your provision, and your actions were all destined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالَّذِي قَدَّرَ The one who destined everything. And then this is a refutation of two parties that Allah is refuting. The previous verse, what did Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he say? الَّذِي خَلَقَ فَسَوَّى The one who created and what did he also do? He proportioned. He made this whole universe the way it is. He made it all in line. 
And he also, what did he do? ثم قدر فهدى Because within the Christian, the, the, the non-believers, there are those who are called what? Atheists. Who don't believe God exists. And they say God does not exist with unwavering conviction. That he doesn't exist. They assert that he doesn't exist. And there's another party who say, we don't know whether if God exists. They are what? Agnostics. They say, we don't know if God exists. We can't say yes, nor can we say no. One thing that they do have in common with the atheists, which is that they don't believe in God. Both of them. One just has jazm. He can clearly say God doesn't exist. And the other one is doubtful about it. But both of them do not believe in God, right? The third, second type of are those who say God did create this universe. Okay? And when he did create this universe, he left it and he has nothing to do with it. They are called the deists. They believe God had walked away from this universe. He left it, he has nothing to do with it. There's a refutation on them, which is Allah is saying, Walladi qaddara fahada. No, no, no. Allah destined everything. Everything is going according to how he willed it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also guided everything. So it doesn't mean that Allah wa ta'ala created this universe and he walked away from it. No. Everything is running according to how he planned, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is it that he destined? He destined the one who's going to go to Jannah. He destined the one that's going to go to Jahannam, the hellfire. He destined all of that. He also even destined where they're going to eat from the cattle and the animals. And other than that, he destined it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what did he also do? He guided everybody to what he destined. He guided everybody to what he destined. What was it that was destined for this individual? A shaqawa, destruction, disbelief. So Allah guided him to work towards disbelief. And another one, he is what? What was written for him is sa'ada, prosperity and good. And jannah is what's written for him. So Allah guided him subhanahu wa ta'ala to take the path of guidance and the path of good. Then Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he says, وَالَّذِي أَخْرَجَ الْمَرْعَى An exalted is the one who brings out the pestra. فَجَعَلَهُ And he made it غُثَاء and أَحْوَى He made it black stubbles. The black stubble is when the grass loses its greenery and the animal no longer wants to eat from it. It's become black ashes. It doesn't want to eat from it anymore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who deserves to be exalted because he is the one who brings out the small... The word mar'a is... The grass when it first comes out. And the animals can go and eat it. And enjoy it. And the greenery is good. Allah is the one who made it subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nabat, which is akhbar, greenery, strong. And then after that, what did he make it? And then he makes it into black stubbles. فَجَعَلَهُ وُثَاءً أَحْوَى هَشِيمًا يَابِسًا Dry. Animals only eat it when they're it's a what? When they have nothing else to eat. That's when they go to it. The one who puts it through that process... And does it in this way. He's the one who what? He's the one who deserves to be exalted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, سَنُقُرِئُكَ فَلَا تَنْسَى We will make you recite, O Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is saying to the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, we will make you recite, O Muhammad, and you will not forget. سَنُقُرِئُكَ We will make you recite, Muhammad. فَلَا تَنْسَى And you won't forget. This is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Nabiullah Muhammad that Allah is going to make him قَارِئًا Quran, One who recites the Quran. حَافِظًا لَهُ And he has memorized it and he will never forget it. No forgetfulness will come to him صلى الله عليه وسلم. And then look what Allah says after that. إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ You will only forget that which Allah willed. Here became an ishkal. The scholars here stood over it. Allah is saying to the messenger, Sanuquriuka, we are going to O Muhammad, make you recite, Fala Tansa, you will not forget Illa Masha'Allah. You'll only forget that which Allah wills for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here the question is: Will the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forget the Quran? When Allah said to the Prophet, لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به إن علينا جمعه وقرآنه فإذا قرأناه فاتبع قرآنه. That oh Muhammad, don't move your tongue. When Jibril first came down, Allah said to the messenger, عليه الصلاة والسلام. Jibril said to the messenger, Muhammad, 
Don't move your tongue. لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجلبي. Don't move your tongue fast and hasty. So you can memorize, because the Prophet really wanted to take the Qur'an fast. Leave it to us. إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ وَقُرْآنَ We, it's upon us to compile the whole Qur'an in your chest, and it is upon us to make you recite it accurately. Leave it to us. So in the ayah, Allah is telling us that the Qur'an in its totality is going to be compiled and gathered in the heart of the Messenger. And here Allah is saying that there are parts of the Qur'an which you're going to forget. So Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqiti, the great Mufassir, the author of the kitab Adwa'u al-Bayan fi Idahi al-Qur'an ibn al-Qur'an, he wrote a book called Daf'u al-Iham, where he comes to these verses that from the apparent, they seem to be contradicting themselves. He goes and he stands over those verses and he reconciles between them. And he brings down how they can be, how, how they can be brought together. So what is it that he said, rahimahullah, that this ayah, it can be brought together. He said it can be brought together that what it means is san, we will make you recite O Muhammad فَلَا تَنْسَى and you will not forget إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ Allah, except that which Allah wills from the verses that were abrogated لَفْضًا وَمَعْنًا its wordings were abrogated and its meaning were also abrogated we're going to make you forget those ones because there's no need why? because we've brought for you what is better as Allah said in the Quran مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ أَوْ نُنْسِهَا مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ أَوْ نُنْ Is it right? مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ أَوْ نُنْسِهَا نَأْتِ بِخَيْرٍ مِنْهَا أَوْ مِثْلِهَا صح? Did I read it correctly brothers? Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He tells us مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ There is not a verse that we abrogate Muhammad or we make you forget, except we will bring for you verses that are better than it. Better than it. So Nabi like Muhammad would, make, would be made to forget those verses because of the fact that something better has been brought to him. إِلَّا مَا نَسَخَهُ اللَّهُ تِلَاوَتَهُ That which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to abrogate, Nabi Allah Muhammad will be then made to forget those. Salawatullahi, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Some of the mufassireen, they said, سَنُقْرِئُكَ O oh Muhammad, we will make you recite the Qur'an. فَلَا تَنْسَى Do not forget it. So they made the la. فَلَا, فلا تَنْسَى They made it here. la unnahiya, The la of prohibition. That the Prophet has been prohibited from forgetting the Qur'an. But this is incorrect. Because if it's la unnahiya, grammatically it's wrong because the job of the la unnahiya is that it has to remove the alif that the alif al maqsura that's in the word fala tansa. It should have been fala tansa. That's how it should have made it. Because of la unna here, what does it do? What does it do? It makes, it does hadf of the alif. It will remove the alif. So the rasm of the Quran, the fact that the Quran is written like this, shows us the alif maqsura is there. So that la is not la unna here. It's not the Prophet being prohibited alayhi salatu wasalam, for forgetting. He's not being told, don't forget. Allah is saying, he won't forget. Or you're not going to forget Muhammad. Allah is saying that it won't happen. That's not the case. Sanuqri'uka, we will make you recite on Muhammad. Fala tansa, and you will not forget. And it doesn't mean, and do not forget. It means, and you will not forget. Illa ma sha Allah, except that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted you to forget from the verses that are abrogated innahu allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed ya'lamu he knows ya'lamu al-jahra he knows what is declared and said out in the open he knows it subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ma yakhfa and he also knows what is hidden here brothers i want to stand over a fa'ida latifa a benefit that we can take which is that allah told us subhanahu wa ta'ala that this quran is what it is preserved it is what? It is preserved. And that it's what? It is protected. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected it by making Nabi Allah Muhammad memorize it all. And there's a ijaz, a miracle in this, without a doubt. And the miracle is Rajul, which is Ummi, a man who can't read or write. Who is that? Nabi Allah Muhammad. He can't read nor write. 
الذين يتبعون الرسول النبي الأمي that they follow the prophet who is illiterate could it read no right Allah says in another ayah وما كنت تتلو من قبله من كتاب ولا تخطه بيمينك إذا لرتاب المبطلون محمد you are one who didn't write this Quran you did not write this Quran نبي الله محمد who could not read no right had memorized this whole Quran in his heart he kept it in its lengthiness he's kept it alayhi salatu wasalam at an age where majority of people can't start memorizing at that time 40 he memorized it all alayhi salatu wasalam this is khariqun lil ada this is outside the norms this shows us that it's a mu'jiza and that he would lead them on this because wallahi if the quran was a lie you can't remember a lie that you made up and if it was a lie, then it would have to, if you want to remember the lie that you made up, you would have to write it somewhere to always go over it. But he can't do that because he can't read. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So the fact that he memorized these surahs in this length, and the ayat being mutashabih, looking like each other. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna basiran. Wallahu basirun bima ta'amaluna. Ayat that are back to front, remembering each one. The ones who can read and write are struggling to memorize it. Hadihi, this is, ikhwah, is enough to show a person that this Quran is a miracle. It's a mu'jiza khalida. As the poet said, جَاءَ النَّبِيُّونَ بِالْآيَاتِ فَانْصَرَمَتْ وَجِئْتَنَا بِحَكِيمٍ غَيْرَ مُنْصَرِمِ آيَاتُ كُلَّمَا طَالَ الْمَدَى جُدَدُ يُبَيِّنُهُنَّ جَمَالُ الْعِتْقِ وَالْقِدَمِ Every prophet, he came with a miracle. And every prophet, the miracle he came with, it went when that prophet went. Musa came with a miracle. When Nabi Allah Musa went, the miracle went with him. Nabi Allah Musa came. When Musa came and he died, the miracle of the, the Asa, it went with Musa. Every prophet's miracle went with him, except Nabi Allah Muhammad. His miracle is still with us. Because if we said to these people of the scripture, and the people today, oh the miracle, it only happened at the time of the prophet, they will say, well you can't prove anything. We are the only people who can say our miracle still stands. That our miracle till today is that come with the likes of this Quran. Our challenge is opened with Nabi Allah Muhammad gone alayhi salatu wasalam. So the Quran is a miracle. Another benefit that we can take from this ayah is سَنُقْرِئُكَ فَلَا تَنْسَى Which is that the Quran will be read to you Muhammad. Do not forget it. I wanted to mention أَسْبَابِ الْمُعِينَ Things that will help and aid a person to memorize the Quran and not forget it. What are practical steps? that a person can take in order to memorize the Qur'an and keep it with them so they don't forget it a lot. The following is what a person should do. Ta'ahud al-Qur'an wa mudawamatu qira'atihi That a person's consistency in reading the Qur'an and go, going over it a lot. If a person does muraja'ah, revision of the Qur'an and keeps going over it a lot, the person will learn the Qur'an. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us in the hadith, like... The person who's holding onto the Quran and has memorized the Quran, that it's like a camel that is tied. If the person comes back to it and ties it and makes sure that it's there and overlooks it, then that camel will never, never get away from him. But if he doesn't, he leaves it and he walks away from it, then that camel will what? Ya ikhwa. If you hunted a deer today and you got the deer, what would you do? You would tie it strong, right? You would have to tie it strong. And you would always have to overlook it. If it's there, has it left? Has it moved? Has it, the rope tightened? Is it still? You overlook it just so it doesn't leave. The Quran is like that. The person has to keep looking over it. Making sure that it doesn't what? It doesn't get away from him. The second thing, brothers, that helps you memorize the Quran and also to keep the Quran is at takhafuf min al dhulubi wal ma'asi to lessen or to stay away from sins and shortcomings and errors and going against Allah tabarak wa ta'ala Allah's commands why because brothers we all know what does sin do to blessings of Allah the ma'asi the sins and the dhulub what do they do to zilu ni'am they remove blessings don't they and isn't the quran a blessing isn't the Qur'an not a blessing? The Qur'an is a blessing. The sins, it destroys blessings. 
That's what Allah said in the Quran. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٍ That there is not a calamity that befalls you. The only reason why this calamity fell onto you and it's the way it is, is because of that which your hands have put forward. So calamities, trials and tribulations fall on you. Adab, because of what? Because of sins. So, if a person is not given the Qur'an, what is it? It's a punishment. The best of speeches are not being given to you. The reason is because there are obstacles and things that are standing in the way. Also, the th- other thing that helps is Staying away from being a person who is excessively stressed. A person who is what? Depressed. Lesson on that. How can a person lesson on that? The things that make a person stressed is when they connect their heart other than other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Placing things like the dunya in your, play, in your way. What are you doing? Placing in your sight the dunya and giving so much importance to it, it starts to stress you out. And when a student of knowledge or a person who's learning the Quran places other things in his way, stresses increase. And when the stress, stresses increases and the responsibility increases, what happens? You're unable to memorize. That's what Allah tells us in the Quran. مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِرَجُلٍ مِنْ قَلْبَيْنِ فِي جَوْفِهِ Allah has not placed in the person two hearts. You can't have one leg in the dunya and the other leg you have to memorize the Quran. How would you memorize when you give your whole heart to this thing? So lesson on every other obstacles on the way. Get rid of it. The other thing is increasing in what? Asking or expressing to Allah and showing Him that you are grateful for what he's done for you. Shukur. Coming with shukur. Gratitude. Gratitude allows you to gain more than what you have. As Allah said in the Quran, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٍ Allah tells us in the ayah, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ If you show gratitude, لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ I will increase for you. You memorize ten surahs, if you show gratitude, I'll give you another ten. If you show another, I'll give you more. Allah will increase it for you. وَلِذَلِكَ دَعُوا لَمَا They say that shukur is what? It is قَيْدٌ لِلْمَوْجُودِ وَصَيْدٌ لِلْمَفْقُودِ Shukur is what? قَيْدٌ لِلْمَوْجُودِ Shukur restricts Holds down for you what you already have. Qaid. Do you know what a qaid is? Qaid is what you tie a, a camel and a horse or whatever with. You knot it down with that. Sah? It's what you hold it down with. Shukur is what holds down the blessing that you already have. It will hold it down for you. It will make it not escape from you. Wasaydun lil mafqood. And that which you don't have, that's not in your possession, it hunts it for you. Shaid means to hunt. It will go out there and it will bring it to you. That's what shukur does. It, it allows what you have to be with you and it also brings for you more that you, you don't have. And all of that is found in the ayah that Allah says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ Also, what helps the person memorize the Qur'an is making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking him to increase you in knowledge. Supplicating is from the most powerfulest weapon that a person has by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives you what? That he gives you the keys and opens your heart to the Quran because a person hasn't got the ability to get what is with Allah except to please him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had say that Jibreel came to me and he blew into my soul that there's not a person on the face of this earth except that they're going to eat the provision that was written for them. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said فَأَجْمِلُوا فِي الطَّلَبِ Then perfect, perfect how you try to look for your rizq since it's written for you. Then perfect the way that you try to look for your rizq. And then look what the Prophet said. فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُنَالُ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Because you will not attain what you will not attain that which is with Allah except in a way that pleases Him. So what is it that's with Allah? The Quran. You won't attain what's with Him except in a way that pleases Him by begging Him, 
and Allah loves subhanahu wa ta'ala when his hum, stu, uh, slave, sorry, when his slave humbles himself, lifts his hands up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves and he will give to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what helps memorize the Quran. This is what? Memorize the Quran. Revision is the first one, brothers. Al-Imam al-Bukhari, Muhammad, Ibn Ismail, Ibn Ibrahim. Al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, was once asked. And one of his students came up to him and he asked him, he said to Bukhari, do you know anything, any medication that if I take, it will help with my memory? Bukhari was the right person to ask this question to, right? Yeah, his memorization, it was an ayah, it was a miracle in the hiv. So he said, no, I don't know a medication or some, some, something a person can take that if they eat, their memory would be good. I don't know, he said. Uh, there's no particular fruit or food that should be eaten that will bring your memory. Uh, but he said, I do know what can help the person's memory. And he said that it's two things. Nahmatul rajul. A person's drive and will. The fact that the person wants this so badly and he's putting every effort that he has. And the second one is, brothers, what? And the second one is, When the person excessively looks at this thing so much, muraja, revision. There's not a person who's memorized so much except that he's beating you on revision. He's beating you with what? With revision. So the person should do that when it comes to the Quran. And as you can see, the Quran was made for the hearts. Where was it made for? The place that the Quran is meant to be in is the heart. When the Quran came down, whose heart did it come down on? Huh? It started off on the heart of the Prophet. Okay, brothers. And the Sahabas, where did they memorize it from? Look at the ahadith when you read them. That they used to say, Allamana Rasulullah, the Messenger taught us Salatul Salatul Istikhara, Kabakana you alimuna ayat and mikitabilai. That the Prophet used to teach us Istikhara, he taught us it. The way Salatul Istikhara and the dua to say, the way he taught us an ayah of the Quran. The companions are always they compare it to that. That the Prophet taught us this thing as he would teach us an ayah from the Quran. So they took it from his mouth. Walidalika Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and he said, I took 70 surahs from the Prophet's mouth, directly from his mouth. Another hadith, Surah Al Qaf. Surah Al Qaf. What did the narrator, the female narrator, she said, I memorized Surah Al Qaf because the Prophet used to read it in the khutbah and I memorized it from his mouth. So she wouldn't, she wouldn't write it. That shows you. From the Prophet's heart, to her heart, to the students of those she... That's how the Qur'an used to be passed on. It wasn't in bookshelves. And it wasn't kept in what? On the walls. And it wasn't put into a frame. A lot of people, they have ayatul kursi on the wall. Hey, read it. He doesn't know it. And there's an ayatul kursi. Huh? On the what? On the wall. But he doesn't know it. So the Quran was made for the heart. بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ Look what Allah says. بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ In another ayah, what did he say? وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَى قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُذِيرِينَ بِلِسَانِ الْعَرَبِي the Quran and the the Quran and the heart. So that's where it should be in. And we should always realize it's not about a matter of writing it, it's a matter of trying to memorize the Quran and keep it with us. May Allah make us from the people of the Quran. Make us the pe- from the people of the Quran. He is the one who has the ability to do that for us. Sanuquri'uka. We will make you recite, O Muhammad. فَلَا تَنْسَ And you will not forget. إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ Except that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills from the verses that were abrogated. تِلَاوَتَهُ It's recitation. إِنَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Indeed, 
يَعْلَمُ He knows الْجَهْرَ He knows that which is declared وَمَا يَخْفَى And he also knows what is hidden. Allah, to Allah, everything is apparent. When Allah says something that is hidden, it means it from the perspective of the creation, not from the perspective of the creator, because there's nothing hidden for him. When you hear ilmul ghayb, the knowledge of the unseen, it means from the angle of the creation, not from the angle of the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah says, وَنُيَسِّرُكَ لِلْيُسْرَى And we will ease you towards ease. This is another promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, which is what? Wa'adun, a promise to the prophet, which is what? That Allah is going to make easy for him righteous deeds. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, good deeds, righteous deeds, it will be easy for him. And then, look what he says, I, I, and we will make ease for you. And we will make easy, we will make for you, Muhammad. And we will ease you towards ease. What is it that Allah is going to ease the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam towards ease? The righteous deeds are from the means for a person to enter Jannah. So the actions, the righteous deeds become easy for you. And it will go towards ease which is Jannah. Allah is going to make the actions easy for the Prophet ﷺ. Towards ease, meaning towards Jannah. So it would easily enter Jannah alayhi salatu wasalam. Then Allah says, فَذَكِّرْ O Muhammad, remind. So remind Nabiullah Muhammad. In nafa'ati dhikra. If the reminder should benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَذَكِّرْ إِنْ نَفَعَتِ الذِّكْرَى فَذَكِّرْ remind. If the reminder should benefit. The mafhum al-mukhalafa is that do not remind if the reminder is not going to benefit. And some of the ulama, they took from this, like Al-Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, he took from this ayah that if the person that you're talking to and the person that you want to do the reminder of to, if they're not going to benefit and they're not going to take it and the matters are going to get worse, then you shouldn't give that person a, a reminder and you should leave them. And so he said that the word here that in is if. So you look at the person you're giving the reminder to. And Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah took that as well. And he even applied it on the, the Tatar. The Tatar, they used to drink alcohol. They used to love to drink alcohol. So one time, the ulama of the time of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, they went out collectively to go to the Tatar leaders. And they wanted to say to the leaders, don't drink alcohol, you shouldn't drink alcohol. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, leave them, let them drink the alcohol, let them indulge into the alcohol. And they said to him, why? Why would you say that? And he said, because the fact that they drink the alcohol, they are preoccupied than killing the Muslims. And killing the Muslims is more, because the sins are two types. A sin, which is what? A sin, which is restricted to you, which is called ma'asi, which are qasira. They're restricted to you. They're your own sins. And there are ma'asi, which are muta'adiyah. Sins that are not restricted to you, it moves on to others. In the sharia, which one is worse? The sins that, are, that involve others. Killing, spilling blood it involves others. This is greater than you going home and drinking alcohol in your bedroom. Than killing people. So Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah, he looked at the masalih and the mafasid. He weighed it and he said, let them drink. Because at the time that they're drinking, they stop killing the Muslims. They what? They stop killing the Muslims. So he believed, فَذَكِّرْ Remind if the reminder will benefit. But here it will benefit not to remind these people. And to leave them the, the way they... Ah, and also Ali ibn Abi Talib took that opinion. And Ali ibn Abi Talib has a very powerful statement. Is that he said, Hadithu nasa bima ya'rifun aturidun an yukadab Allah wa rasuluh. Tell the people what they can understand. Do you want them to dis- dis- disbelieve in Allah and His Messenger? When you're talking to a people and you want to benefit them and give them a reminder, tell them what their minds can comprehend. Do you want them to disbelieve in Allah and His Messenger? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, what did he say? لَسْتَ بِمُحَدِّثٍ قَوْمًا حَدِيثًا لَمْ تَبْلُغُ عُقُولَهُمْ إِلَّا كَانَ لِبَعْضِهِمْ فِتْنَةً Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, 
that you do not tell a people uh, information that their minds cannot comprehend except it becomes a what? Fitna for them. They might leave the religion because of it. They might walk away from the deed. So some information you withhold for a period of time. Not always. That's not always. But for that time may not be the right thing to say. And so that's why it's important that you look at as the ulama al-balagha they say muraat muqtada al-mukhatab that you observe who you're talking to and what is this person's mindset like and what information can I give him. But the minute he walks into Islam you tell him things that his mind cannot comprehend. This shows that you haven't understood the fiqh of da'wah. Uh, you haven't understood the fiqh of da'wah. And what can you say and what can't you say that you've not understood it. What is meant by that they benefit from the they benefit from the reminder. Now, how can a person benefit from the reminder? There's three things that are in giving people reminder and conveying a message of Islam. There are three benefits that are in it. The first one is that you're establishing a proof of Allah on this person. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, رُسُلًا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنذِرِينَ لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُّسُلِ that you're coming here, you're establishing the proof on this person, and you're trying to give this person no excuse to the day of judgment. That's the first reason. The second reason is, ma'adhiratan ila rabbihim. That you have the day of judgment, a way out. To say, oh Allah, I have established the proof, and I've conveyed what I knew. I, would, I did not withhold knowledge I knew. I did not deceive. I told the people what it was. And the second one is that the person that you're advising and you're reminding, the reminder will benefit them and it will increase them in righteousness and that it won't make matters worse. Those are the three reasons why you would give a reminder. And Allah mentioned the last two because the first one I gave the evidence for it. رُسُولًا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنذِرِينَ لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُّسُولِ But the second one and the third one, the evidence is وَإِذْ قَالَتْ أُمَّةٌ When a group of the a nation, they said to their followers, a group said, وَإِذْ قَالَتْ أُمَّةٌ مِّنْهُمْ A group of them said, لِمَ تَعِذُونَ قَوْمًا إِلَّهُمْ هُلِكُمْ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُهُمْ عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا What did they say? قَالُوا مَعَذِرَةً إِلَى رَبِّهِمْ وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ That why are you going to give a reminder to a people Allah wants to destroy, Allah wants to annihilate them off the face of this earth? Why would you give these people reminders? And why would you talk to them about what would soften their hearts? And they responded by saying, قَالُوا مَعْذِرَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّنَا قَالُوا مَا قَالُوا They said, مَعْذِرَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ mm-hmm. إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ مَعْذِرَةً Meaning, we don't want to have any burden on us. So we want to feel that burden from ourselves. And that we don't have, uh, we're not going to be questioned the day of judgment. And also the second reason, uh, the third uh, reason is وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ And maybe there might be a possibility that these individuals might become pious from it. So those three, what was the f- f- three? رُسُولًا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنذِرِينَ لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُّسُولِ وَإِذْ قَالَتْ أُمَّةٌ لِمَا تَعِذُونَ قَوْمًا لِلَّهُمْ مُلِكُمْ أَوْ مُعَذِّمُمْ عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا قَالُوا مَعَذِرَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ the last two is مَعَذِرَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ That they don't have excuses the day of judgment. I, I, I've, oh Allah, sorry, the second one is Oh Allah, I have done what I knew. The third one is That the person that you're advising might gain from it piety and nobility and take on board and benefit from it. Those are the three reasons why we give reminders. If none of them are going to be found and the people are stubborn and they're not going to accept it then this is what the ayah is saying, then forget those people. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامْ مُحَمَّدِ الْأَمِينَ الشَّنْقِيطِيُّ If I'm not wrong, when it came to the ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah, عَلَيْكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ مَنْ ضَلَّ إِذَا هَتَدَيْتُمْ Surah Al-Ma'idah, he brings the ijma' الْمُحَمَّدِ الْأَمِينَ الشَّنْقِيطِيُّ I think it was this ayah. I think it was this ayah. عَلَيْكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ مَنْ ضَلَّ إِذَا هَتَدَيْتُمْ he brings in that ayah, Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqiti, rahimahullah, that in that ayah, if the person that you're trying to convey the message to is going to just take stubbornness and hard heading and it's going to make the matters worse, then you shouldn't talk. It's that ayah he brings in ijma'ah. 
becoming a police patrol in the UK, London, going outside on the streets and saying I'm stopping haram and you make matters worse as delil and evidence for what? That you don't know what is known as fiqh al-amr bil-ma'roof and nahan al-munkar. Calling to the good and prohibiting the evil, you haven't even understood what it is and how it should be called. The Prophet said in the hadith, مَنْ رَأَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَطْعَفُ الْإِمَانِ That if you see a person do bad, then what do you say to them? مَنْ رَأَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ Stop it with your hand. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ If you're not able to do, what do you do? And if you're not able to do with your tongue, what do you do? With your heart. But don't be like the Tablighi Sufi who met the man smoking and then he was smoking with his left and he said, brother, smoke with your right hand. Uh, he said, do it with your right hand. Uh, he said, this is fiqh da'wa or lawiyat. Stay, bit by bit, I'm going to make him stop. He said, if you're going to smoke, do it with your right. If you're going to drink, <laughs> he said, do it with your right. Inshallah ta'ala, talk to him about, la la, that's not it. It means observing the masalih and the mafasid I'll conclude there, inshaAllah ta'ala, anything which I have said that was wrong and incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka tuhu ilayhi.